Hello, I'm Dr. Ola Kamerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation course. This is lecture one. What is simulation? I will talk about modeling and computer simulation, advantages, disadvantages, and pitfalls. Simulation is a very broad term. It covers methods and applications to imitate or mimic real systems, usually via computers. And it applies in many fields and industries and is a very popular and powerful tool. What is a system? How would you define a system? Does it consist of a single part or multiple parts? Do we expect system to go through some changes or processes? What's a system? Do parts of a system interact? Is it a system or not? Pots and pans. There's not much interaction, so no, it's not a system. A clock. Parts of a clock work together, so it's a system. A manufacturing plant, also a system. A knitting club. It doesn't really interact much in terms of working together for the same goal, so no, it's not a system. A choir. A choir, on the other hand, works together to produce a song. So it's a system. Medical clinic is a system. Airport operations is also an example of a system. So a system is facility or process, actual or planned. And there's many, many examples, including manufacturing facility, bank operation, airport operations, transportation, hospital, computer network, freeway system, business process, criminal justice system, chemical plants, fast food restaurant, supermarket, theme park, emergency response system, shipping ports, and also military combat logistics. How can we work with a system? It's often important to study the system so we can measure it, improve, design, and control it. It would be nice if we could uh, maybe just play with actual system uh, because an advantage is unquestionably we're looking at the right thing. But often it's impossible in reality to work with the actual system. The system may not exist or it could be disruptive, expensive or dangerous. Now let's talk about the models. Model is a set of assumptions or approximations about how a system works. We use models to study real systems and we study a model instead of real system. Usually, it's much easier, faster, cheaper, and safer. We can try also a wide-ranging ideas with a model that we cannot try with a real system. We make our mistakes on the computer where they don't really count, rather than in the real world where they do count. Often, even building a model is very constructive, regardless of the result. Another important thing is model validity. Because any kind of model needs to be valid to be useful. So this applies not just to simulation, but different types of modeling. So we need to take care in when we're building to mimic reality faithfully. And we need to take care of appropriate level of detail. So we need to make sure also when we do the validation that we get the same conclusions from the model as we would from a system. And we can read more about model validation in chapter 13 of the ARENA book. So what are the different types of models? Well, first, we have the physical systems. So physical uh, uh, models can be, um, examples can be tabletop material handling models, mock-ups of fast food restaurants, flight simulators, etc. There is also a different type of models that are called logical or mathematical models. And these are the models that we're going to focus on in this class. And these are approximations, assumptions about the system's operations. And often they're represented through computer program and appropriate software. 
exercise program to try things, get results, learn about model behavior. We will be studying the second type, which is uh, logical or mathematical models. If model is simple enough, we can use traditional mathematical analysis, and that will allow us to get exact results and lots of insight into model. And we can use Kuhn theory, differential equations, or linear programming. But when we work with complex systems, this can seldom be validly represented by simple analytic models. So these complex systems, they uh, require some different type of modeling because simple analytic models uh, run us into danger of oversimplifying assumptions and um, that would uh, not make our model valid. So again, right, we can do uh, what you call the type 3 error or work with wrong problem if we do not um, use proper models. Often complex systems require a complex model and analytical methods do not apply. So what do we need to do? Well, the answer is often computer simulation. And computer simulation is um, basically methods for studying a wide variety of models of systems that we can numerically evaluate on the computer and we can use software to imitate systems operations characteristics that often evolve over time. We can use computer simulation to study simple models, but we shouldn't use it if an analytical solution is available. The real part of simulation is actually in studying complex models. Simulation can tolerate complex models since we don't even aspire to an analytical solution. So what are the advantages that simulation offers us? Well, one of the big advantages is being flexible and being able to model precisely what we want. So let's take a look at this. You're working, are you walking along in the dark and see someone on hands and knees searching the ground under a street light? What's wrong? Can I help you? The other person. I dropped my car keys and I can't find them. You again. Oh, so you dropped them around here, huh? The other person. No, I dropped them over there. And the person points into the darkness. You're confused. Then why are you looking here? The other person. Because this is where the light is. So the moral of the story, right, you need to avoid looking where the light is. And the simulation can help you make sure you don't look where the light is, but instead um, model the, sim, uh, the situation precisely. It allows you this flexibility to model things as they are, even if messy and complicated. There's other advantages of simulation. In particular, simulation allows uncertainty, non-stationarity in modeling. The only thing that's for sure is nothing is for sure, of course. And danger of ignoring system variability is uh, a problem in terms of model validity. Another advantage of simulation is that there has been advances in computing um, and cost ratios. So we now, it's now estimated that 70, at least 75% of computing power is used for various kinds of simulations. And there's dedicated machines such as real-time shop floor control. Another advantage is advances in simulation software. Far easier to use, uh, we have guided user interfaces. No longer as restrictive in modeling constructs. It's now a hierarchical and, and down to see. Statistical design and analysis capabilities. Of course, with the advantages, there is a disadvantage. So what's the bad news? We, when we use simulation, we don't get exact answers, only approximations, estimates. And But this is also true of many other modern methods. We can bond um, we, we would be bound by um, machine roundoff errors. 
Another bad news is that uh, when we use stochastic simulations, we get random output. So this is random input, random output situation. And in that case, we need to use statistical design analysis of simulation experiments. We can exploit noise control, replicability, sequential sampling, and variance reduction technique. However, there is a catch because standard statistical methods seldom work. There is also different kinds of simulations that we want to talk about. So we want to be able to distinguish between the following three types of uh, different kinds of simulations. There is static versus dynamic. And in order to understand what's dynamic is if we can answer yes to the following question. Does time have a role in the model? For the static um, model, the time doesn't matter. The in a dynamic model, it's very important uh, factor is the time because as time goes by, things change uh, dramatically. So another thing is continuous change versus discrete change. So when we're talking about continuous time simulations, the state changes continuously. But when we talk about discrete time simulation, then it changes more discrete points in time. We also have deterministic versus stochastic simulations. And we have it as stochastic when uh, we have an uncertainty and deterministic when things are sure. So overall, most operational models are dynamic, discrete time, stochastic. Uh, but if you wanted to see some other types of models, in chapter 2 of Rina book, we have one static model, and chapter 11 of the same book discusses continuous and combined discrete continuous.